Countdown. Congratulations! This live broadcast is specially brought to you by Academy YouTuber Malaysia, an initiative by EDD Malaysia and Kelab Guru Malaysia. Please pay attention. The live broadcast will begin shortly. The link to the certificate of attendance will be provided at the end of the session. Please make sure it is filled within the stipulated time. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum, good evening and hi to all the teachers, parents and the wonderful students. So welcome to Pusat Tuition Academy YouTuber, a joint venture with EDD Malaysia and Club Guru Malaysia with the hashtag uh, Bermula Percuma Selamanya Percuma. So before we proceed, let's begin our session with the recitation of Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah. And for the non-Muslim, please take a moment of silence. Okay, how is everyone doing today? My prayer is that everyone is in the best of health and ready to proceed with today's class. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, I am Madam Rosmaya as your moderator and also a control host for today. And I am a Form 6 Physics teacher at SMJK Yuhua Kajang. Uh, and the most important person today is our presenter, okay, Teacher Noon. So she is from uh, College Magic Class in Negeri Sembilan. So let us give a warm welcome to our presenter. Okay, even though there are only two of us, but we will make sure that today's session runs smoothly. Okay, for the record, uh, we are now live on Teacher Noon channel. So as a sign to support uh, to Teacher Noon for the hard work in preparing today's lesson, so please subscribe her channel and not forgetting my channel too. Okay, as usual, the lesson will last approximately one hour. So the certificate link and the credit claim link will be given at the end of this session. And remember that you can only use EDD email and more email to claim the certificate. So for credit claim, uh, you need to collect one letter and five uh, digit codes. Eh? I repeat, one letter and five digit codes, which will be announced separately. So three times eh, during our class today. So be sure to follow the class up until the end to get the complete code for the credit claim. Uh, I would also like to remind students to use appropriate language and also use appropriate profile picture if you wish to post comments in the chat box. Okay, I'm pretty sure all the students here are excellent students who will uphold a positive uh, classroom environment. So please give your full cooperation by making this class a lively one. Yeah. Okay, so stay focused and if you have any questions, so please write on the chat box and Teacher Non will try to provide you with the answers. So I can see in the chat box here we have Chia Ying, eh? Chia Yao. Okay, hi. Eh? Okay, and I think the many of you also are there. Eh? Uh, so before I pass this session to Teacher Non, okay, I will announce the letter and the first two digits code uh, for credit claim. So listen, uh, students, eh, the codes are uh, A20, eh, A20, okay? I repeat, A20, okay. So without further ado, please welcome Teacher Non to start her presentation. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to each and every one of you. So how's everyone today? See you again in uh, for today's our tuition class today. So as usual, my name is Noon Benti Muhammad Noon. You can call me Cik Gunun or Madam Noon. I am from College Matriculasi Negeri Sembilan. So for today's class, we will continue uh, my pre uh, our previous class. Okay, but before that, I want to introduce you the team in Academy YouTuber. So the first, this is uh, the physics team lead by Madam Rosmaya and there, there are also teacher Su, teacher Habzahayu and me. Okay, then we also have uh, the mathematic teams lead by teacher Im. Okay, and we also have the biology team 
lead by Cikgu Faiza. And for the chemistry team, lead by Cikgu Shahnun. Okay. And we also have Perakaunan and Economy Prior Team, lead by Madam Fizi. Okay. And uh, Academy YouTuber also have apps where you can uh, download from a Google Play Store. Okay, there is a lot of video there, include the physics video, so you can download to see all the videos, okay? And then, okay, now we will continue. As I said, this is uh, my second part. The first part of this topic, which is electric current and direct current circuit. I discussed uh, topic one to topic uh, five. And for this session, this part, to this class, I will discuss part uh, five to part nine. Okay, topic, sorry, topic six to topic nine. Okay, another four topic. Okay, so uh, are you ready? Okay, let's start. The six, yeah, because of the uh, six uh, subtopic, which is about the Kirchhoff rules. Okay, so the, the pronunciations, sometimes they pronounce kickoff or uh, I always use Kirchhoff. Okay, Kirchhoff rules. So actually Kirchhoff rules divide by two which is the first rule and the second rule. So for the first Kirchhoff rule, it states that the sum of the current entering any junction in the circuit must equal to the sum of the current leaving that junction. So for the, for the first Kirchhoff rule, we focus on the junction. If you have a circuit of the electrical circuit, so we focus on the junction and we can state that the sum of current entering the junction, which is uh, I in is equal to uh, sum of current uh, leaving the junction, so I out. For the second Kirchhoff rule, there are two Kirchhoff rule. So for the second Kirchhoff rule, it states that in any loops, the sum of EMF is equal to the sum of the product of the current and resistance. So given by the equation of sum of EMF inside the loop, okay, equal to the sum of the product of the current flow through the uh, resistor. Okay, uh, and to use this Kirchhoff rules, there are a few steps. So I divide into five steps actually. So the first step is when you want to apply the Kirchhoff rule to solve the question. Uh, after this, I will explain what is the function of Kirchhoff rule. So the first one is uh, we need to identify the direction of current. Okay, so for the direction of current, because of referring to the first Kirchhoff rule, we refer to the junction. We need to refer to the junction. For the uh, the second step is we need to identify the direction of EMF, and the rules for the EMF is because of the EMF have terminal positive and negative terminal, right? So when we want to show the direction of EMF, it is from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And for the third step is the to identify the direction of loops. Okay, normally we have two or three loops. So for each loop, to choose the direction of loop, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we follow the, the EMF in that loop with the higher value. Okay. And then after we identify these three, the current, the EMF, the direction of EMF, the direction of current, and also the direction of loops, then we can apply the first and second Kirchhoff rule. So normally for the first Kirchhoff rule, we call it, we also call it current rules or uh, junction. Sometimes they say junction rules. And for the second Kirchhoff rule, we call it, we also call it voltage rule or loops. Okay, loops rule. That's the first part uh, for today's class, which is about the Kirchhoff rules. Uh, during my explanation later on, I will explain detail the application. And then um, uh, the, uh, the, the second subtopic for today's class is about the electric energy and power. So uh, if you refer to the uh, diagram here, the circuit here, uh, when a voltage V apply across the resistor R, so this resistor will receive uh, electric power because of it is energy supply to the charge to move. So this electric power is given by the rate of the energy transfer or equal to delta QV over delta T. And before this, previously in the first topic, if I'm not mistaken, first subtopic, delta Q per delta T is equal to I, right? Uh, so we just uh, replace I, the current. So we get the 
a power delivered to the resistor in the circuit or power delivered to the conductor is equal to IV. Okay, this is the first power. The second power is the about the power loss or power dissipated through the conductor. So this power dissipated or power loss through the conductor is also equal to the power supplied by the electric energy. And the equation given referring to the Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR. Remember the Ohm's law? V is equal to IR. So we just re replace V inside the equation. You will get that the P, power loss or power dissipated, the equation is equal to I square R. Or instead of you use I square R, uh, if you have the value for the voltage and the resistance, we can also use the equation for power, which is equal to V square over R. Okay, this is normally it is specific because of power loss or power dissipated is through the resistor only. Okay, but certain cases in that circuit, there is only one resistor. So, if only a resistor or a conductor, so power delivered is also equal to power dissipated. It is depends on the cases. Normally, there are a few uh, resistance in the uh, circuit. And the next part is about the electric energy. Okay. So, the electric energy supply to the conductor, we know that which is the, for the rate of energy transfer or the rate of energy supply is equal to the power. So, referring to this equation, we just rearrange and we replace because of this is the energy supply. So, we refer to the power delivered. So, we just replace P as IV and we get the equation for energy, electric energy supply to the conductor, which is equal to IVT. Okay, IVT. W is equal to IVT. Sometimes they also, you also can use E. Okay, all right. Next one is, sorry. Okay, the third subtopic for today's class is about the potential divider. Okay, so the, I just do the summarize for that uh, for each subtopic. Eh? So for the potential divider, it is about the production of output voltage fraction to the supply voltage. So in this case, uh, for the equation, we refer to the circuit actually. So if you look at that, we have the voltage supply which is VT. Okay, VT is voltage supply. And then there is a there are R1 and R2. And when we put the voltmeter, so we can measure the output voltage here. So to calculate the output voltage through the second resistor, so we can use the relationship of V2 because of from the Ohm's law. Actually, V is equal to IR, so V is directly proportional to the R. Why? Because of if you look at the circuit itself, when the current flow, the current will flow through the R1 and R2. Okay, the current will flow through the R1 and R2. So, the same current flow. So, it is a, a series circuit. So, because of that, V is directly proportional to the R. And then, uh, uh, here, we can write down that V2 divided by VT is equal to for the output voltage V2 through the R2. So, R2 over R effective or R total. Okay. So, meaning that for the VT, it is for both resistor or any arrangement of resistor. Okay, that's about the potential divider. So, this, the last part of today's uh, subtopic is about the potentiometer. So, what is potentiometer? So, potentiometer is actually consists of, uh, if you look at this circuit, potentiometer is actually consists of a, a wire, one uh, AB. AB is a conductor or a wire. Normally, the length is uh, one meter. That's why we call it potentiometer. Connected to the accumulator and also to the EMF, which is unknown EMF. And galvanometer also, there is a jockey there. Jockey is a, like a pen that we need to uh, touch the wire to find the balance point. So, we said that the potentiometer is balanced when the jockey at a position where the on the wire, position on the wire, any position where the IG is equal to zero. Me, IG is equal to zero meaning that there's no current flow through the galvanometer. So, we said that the potential in the balance point. So, we can measure the balance length. Okay, balance length meaning that, for example, here is L2. We can measure the L2. Okay. Uh, to uh, for the balance point when IG show uh, zero deflection. Okay, IG is equal to zero, meaning that no deflection in the galvanometer. 
Okay, so uh, the what is uh, the equation that we can relate for the potentiometer? If just now we have the relationship between the V and the R, and uh, referring to the if you remember the resistivity, the rho, rho resistivity is rho, or if you rearrange the equation, R is equal to rho L over A. So L is also directly proportional to the R. We have the relationship for the potentiometer because of we change the resistance to the wire, a meter wire. So we have the relationship which is E1 per E2 if you refer to the diagram is equal to L1 per L2. Okay, uh, L2 is where we find the balance uh, balance point. And then RAB, the resistance for the wire from A to B to the RAC at the balance point. Okay, so this is the relationship for the potentiometer. So actually, uh, because of we just changed the resistor just now, we have two resistor. Now we replace these two resistor with the wire. So we have the relationship between the resistance and also the length of the wire. And the application for the potentiometer, there are three applications. The first application is to compare the EMF or the voltage. For example, we want to compare EMF1 and EMF2. Okay, uh, or we want to measure the unknown EMF. Okay, we want to measure the unknown EMF, which is E2, for example. And we also can measure the internal resistance of a cell. That's the function of the potentiometer. So because of that, uh, I will discuss following the subtopic. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, there are, I, I am preparing 11 questions. Okay, so I hope that you can stay tuned. At the same time, you can get the credit claim right uh, so take a look at the first question uh, if you have tried the question you also can give your answer in the chat box eh? okay for question number one if you refer to the circuit given in that circuit there are uh, six volt and eight volt this is two loops circuit so referring to the circuit you need to calculate the current i3 okay for the uh, circuit uh, in the figure so where is i3 Okay, here is the I3. Okay, if you look at the in the diagram, I1 and I2, the direction is given to you. But I3, it is not give you any direction. So, you need to identify the magnitude of the I3. Okay, so uh, to identify the uh, current, so we can use the uh, Kirchhoff rule. So, I just write down back the step to use the Kirchhoff rule. There are five steps, right? Okay, identify the direction. So, we will do it one by one. Okay, for example, first, uh, if you can see the changes, yeah, okay, uh, to identify the direction of current, okay, to identify the direction of current, first, we need to identify the junction. So, kalau you tengok, here there are one, uh, there are two junctions. So, I choose one point as the junction. So, I represent by A. I label it by A. So, I, we will look at this junction when we do the calculation after this. And then, uh, the second step is we need to identify the direction of EMF. So, I said that for the direction of EMF. There are three EMF in this circuit. So, to identify the direction supposed to be from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So, for the EMF, the, negative, the short leg is the negative and the long leg is positive. Because of that, we have the direction of the EMF, which is like that. If you can see the green arrow, Okay, showing from the negative to the positive terminal for each EMF. So, second step we have done. Identify the direction of EMF. The third step is we identify the direction of loops. So, there are a tips for the loops where for the direction of loop, we, need, we can follow the EMF. If more than one EMF in this loop, so you can choose higher uh, EMF, higher value uh, EMF. So, because of that, if you look at here, for the first loop, okay, so I just label uh, first and second loop. Sorry, yeah, my cursor is somewhere around. Okay, uh, first loop, uh, I follow the direction of EMF which is greater, which is 6 volt. So, the direction is uh, counterclockwise, okay. And for the second loop, 8 volt is greater compared to 4 volt. So, the direction of loops is uh, clockwise. Okay, loop 2 is clockwise. Okay, is it clear? 
very important yeah, because of we will apply the Kirchhoff uh, following the direction of loops, EMF and current that we have identified. Now we want to apply the first and second Kirchhoff law. Okay, for the first Kirchhoff rule, okay, or Kirchhoff first rule, which is stated earlier, sum of current entering the junction is equal to sum of current leaving the junction. So from at the junction A, Okay, please refer to the junction A. If you look at here, I1, uh, when the when the I1 is flow through the junction A, so I1 is enter, enter the junction, right? Also with I, uh, I2. So we have the equation of I1 plus I2 equal to I3. So we just assume that I3 is leaving the junction. Of course, because of I2 and I1 is entering the junction, it must be one uh, current that leaving the junction. Okay, for the second Kirchhoff rule, which is stated that sum of EMF is equal to sum of the product of current and resistance. So, we refer to the loop one. We have two, because of Kirchhoff rule is for the two loops. There are, we have two loops, right? So, the first loop, so for the equation for the two loops, first loop, okay, uh, sum of EMF. There are two EMF here. So, the direction of EMF with the same direction with the loop consider positive. Because of that, 6 and 4, the direction of EMF is same with the direction of loop. So, 6 plus 4 equal to, okay, for the IR, the product of current and resistance. So, the current that flow inside the first loop is I1. And, okay, the resistor is only 7 ohm. So, IR refer to I1 times with 7. And luckily from loop 1, when we calculate, we get that the I1, we can get directly the I1. We are very lucky. Eh? We get directly because of referring to the question, even we want to calculate the I3, I1 and I2 also not given. So we can get the I, I, I1 from the first loop, which is equal to, if you calculate, you will get 1.4. 3 ampere and for the loop 2 okay if you refer to the loop 2 now in the loop 2 uh, the emf okay uh, emf for the 8 volt and 4 volt both emf is same direction with the loop okay so both is positive meaning that 8 plus 4 and for the ir uh, there is only one resistor which is 5 ohm and the current I2 just flow through the 5 ohm resistor. So for the IR, we only have I2 times with 5. And if we calculate, we will get that I2 is equal to 2.40 uh, ampere. Okay, for the I1 and I2. But we want to, question want us to calculate the I3. So how we have settled the loop 1 and loop 2? Now we need to go back to the junction A. The equation that we form from the first Kirchhoff rule, which is I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. So, can you guess the value for I3? Anybody can guess? You can answer in the chat box if you have tried. What is the value for the I3? Because of I1 is 1.43, I2 is 2.40. And then the from the first sketch of rule, we get the I1 plus I2, which is equal to I3. So, if you calculate, you will get the I3, which is equal to? Anybody can guess? You can calculate, right? So, the answer is 3.83 ampere. Okay, is it clear? Okay, for the first part, I explain detail for the application of the Kirchhoff rule so that you understand how to apply the first and second Kirchhoff rule. The rest is actually mathematics. So, normally, uh, if we if involve a lot of uh, value that we do not know, we can use the equation in our calculator. Okay, but it is okay. Now we go to the take a look at second question. Okay, second question, the circuit is quite, it looks like complicated. But if you look at the question, you need to calculate the current through the 12 ohm resistor. Okay, we need to use the Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff law or Kirchhoff rules. So, which current uh, that flow through the 12 ohm resistor? It is I1. So, actually we want to calculate the I1. Okay, and if you refer to the circuit given to uh, I2 and I3, okay, which is I2 flowing through the uh, 18 ohm resistor and uh, I3 flow through the 8 ohm resistor. So the value for I2 and I1, uh, I2 and I3 also not given to us. So what you need to do, 
uh, we follow the Kitchoff step. There are five Kitchoff uh, rules, right? Step to apply the Kitchoff rules. So the first step we identify the junction. So here I, uh, I don't, I, I choose the junction here. You can choose any junction because of the direction of current have, um, uh, uh, showing there in the circuit. Okay, so I choose junction A. Okay, the first step because of from the junction, I can see which current entering and leaving the junction. And step two, we identify the direction of EMF. And as I said, for the direction of EMF, we refer to the positive, from positive to the negative terminal. Okay, negative to the positive terminal. Sorry, negative to the positive terminal both. So the, that, that's the direction of the EMF and then direction of loop. So for both loop, because of uh, because of the shape, uh, our loop start not, 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 uh, on the, the shape is uh, loop or rectangular. It can be like this. So I just follow the shape of our loop. So for the first loop, the direction is uh, counterclockwise because of uh, the direction of a uh, 9 volt is, uh, we follow the direction of the 9 volt. Okay, 9 volt EMF. Also, same with the second loop. We follow the direction of the 6 volt. So the direction of loop is clockwise. Okay. So that's the three steps that we supposed to apply first in, uh, in our uh, circuit. Okay. Now we will apply the first kitchen of rule. And I just state that uh, the first kitchen of rule and second kitchen of rule. We will use that concept. So for the first kitchen of rule, uh, we refer to the junction A. So at the junction A, if you look at junction A, I1 is entering the junction and I2 and I3 is leaving the junction. Because of that, I1 enter is equal to I2 plus I3. Because of I2 and I3 both leaving the junction. And in this case, we can rearrange the equation. So this is another way to solve, to use the Kitchoff rule. Yeah? We can rearrange the equation uh, and uh, just uh, label with I1, uh, equation 1. And for the second Kitchoff rule, okay, for the second Kitchoff rule, you can uh, take a look at the loop 1. So from the loop, okay, uh, please pay attention eh, for the loop 1. So uh, second Kitchoff rule, we have the sum of EMF is equal to sum of IR. So we will apply the same thing here. Uh, for the loop 1, there is only one EMF, which is 9 volt. And the direction, same with the direction of the loop. So, positive 9 equal to, for the IR, we have 18, 18 ohm, uh, which is I2 flow through the 18 ohm resistor. So, plus with, uh, sorry, uh, 18 I2. And then the direction of I2, same direction with the loop. Okay, because of our loop is uh, counterclockwise. But, uh, for the I3, if you look at I3, the direction of I3 is in the opposite direction with the loops. So we uh, put the negative sign because of the direction of current is opposite. So I3 passing through the flow through the 8 ohm resistor. So we have negative or minus 8 I3. And if we rearrange the equation, it's uh, there is no I1 in the uh, first loop. So we just put 0 I1 plus 18 I2 minus 8 I3, which is equal to 9. So this is our second question, second equation, okay? And then from loop 2, we can form the third equation. We apply the second kitchen of rule, same thing, but referring to the uh, second rule, okay? Uh, second kitchen of rule, the EMF, same direction with the loop, so positive 6, uh, 12 I1, I1 is same direction with the loop, so positive 12 I1. And then I2, same direction with the second loop. So positive 18 I2. Okay, R is uh, 18, yeah? Okay, you refer to the resistance in the circuit. So because of that, we get the third equation. And then we now, from the first, second, and third equation, we, you can use the equation in your calculator. Okay, you just need to substitute the value, the, first, the magnitude of A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and also D, yeah? D1, D2, and uh, A1, A2, A3, and D, D A, uh, sorry, A, B, C, C1, C2, C3, and C, C, if I'm not second. You can refer to your uh, calculator. Eh? So when you solve the equation 1, 2, and 3, okay, uh, just not solve actually. You substitute the value inside your uh, calculator and then you will get, because of actually we want to calculate I1. 
So in your calculator, you will get the set of the value for I1, I2 and I3. But uh, referring to our question, we just specify on the calculator I1. So I1 is equal to negative 0 0.013 ampere. Why negative? Because of actually the direction of I1 supposed to uh, opposite direction with the loops. Okay, supposed to be opposite direction with the loops. That's why we get the I1 is negative. And I just write down the I2 and I3 because of from your calculator, you also can get directly the value for I2 and I3. Okay. But the question said, you we just you, you just need to calculate the I1. Okay. And, uh, okay. So, now we go to the third question. So, for the third question, uh, if you refer to the figure given, E1, uh, EMF1 is 10 volt, R2 is 2 ohm. Okay, please, I just label in the diagram R1, R2, R3. So, R3 is 3 ohm. Uh, I2 is 2 ampere and I3 is 3 ampere. Okay, I1, uh, I2 and I3 is given. R2 and R3 also given. So, we need to determine the I1. Okay, I1, R1 and also the EMF2 which is not given in the question. Okay. And for B, uh, if the wire uh, is cut off at X, what is the current flow through R1? So again, we need to calculate the I1. But for the second case, when the X at this point, we cut off the circuit. Okay. We will discuss one by one. Okay. For the part A, first we will determine the I1, R1 and E2. Okay. So... Ah, uh, uh, if you refer, sorry, yeah. If you refer to the diagram, we will follow the Kirchhoff rules also. First is we identified, uh, sorry, uh, the junction, and the junction is given in the circuit. So junction A at point A, we choose it as uh, our reference junction, and the second step is identify the direction of the EMF. So EMF1 from negative to positive terminal, from positive uh, negative to positive terminal, the direction of EMF, and then the loops. Okay, in this case, quite special. The first loop, I choose uh, the bigger loop. Okay, the bigger loop. Okay, so that's my first loop. And second loop, I choose the second uh, loops here. Okay, so why? Because of if I choose the first loop, it is a lot of things that we do, do not have the value. Okay, so for example, I1 and R1, we have no value. So it is quite difficult kalau, uh, if there, there are more than one that we do not know the value. So I choose the bigger loop as my first loop. Okay, now we will apply the first sketch of rule. So following the junction, we will get that I1, I2 is entering the junction. I3 is leaving the junction. So I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. And then you can substitute the value for I2 and I3 because of given. Then you will get the I1 directly which is equal to 1 ampere. Am I right? 3 minus 2. Okay, that's for the I1. How about for the R1? How we want to calculate the R1? Now we will apply the second Kirchhoff rule and we refer to the first loop. For the first loop, which is the bigger loop, we have the equation when we apply the second Kirchhoff rule. Remember, the sum of EMF is equal to the sum of IR. So we have the relationship EMF1 uh, in the first loop. Eh? The bigger loop, we have e E1 which is same direction with the loop, so positive 10. And then I1, R1, I1 flow through the R1. And for the R3, I3 flow through the R3. So we just follow the labeling uh, current and resistance in this loop. Because of that, if you substitute all the value given, you will get that the R1, the resistance for the first uh, resistance for this uh, uh, resistor is if you calculate, you will get the value which is equal to 1 ohm. Okay? You can calculate. Actually, you uh, 10 minus 9, 3 times 3 is 9. So, equal to 1. 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1. So, the answer for R1 is 1 ohm. How about the EMF2? How we want to calculate the EMF2? So, if you look at here, EMF2 at the second loop. So, we refer to the loop 2. For the loop 2, we have EMF2 that we want to calculate. And, okay, this is quite special because of for the loop 2, I2 is flow through the R2. So, I2, R2. You just need to set both. We have the value 2 ampere and 2 ohm. And for the I3 and R3 also, we have the value which is 3, ohm, uh, 3 ampere and 3 ohm. So, when you substitute, you will get the E2 which is equal to 
13 volt. Okay, so that's A. We can determine I1, R1 and E2 from the first and second pitch of row. Okay, directly. But you need to do it uh, carefully. You need to substitute caref carefully the value inside the equation. And for the B, what happens if the we cut or the circuit is break at the point X? When the uh, if the X is break or cut off, what happens is there is no current flow flow through this area. So I make it simple circuit. So our circuit now there is no uh, at the center eh, at the center of the circuit there is no current flow. So our circuit is just uh, consists of E1, I1, R2, and R3. And in this case, of course, because of there is no junction anymore, the I1 will not divide by 2. So the I1 will flow through the R1 and R2. Uh, R3, sorry. I1 will flow through the R1 and R3. So because of that, uh, we can calculate R1, okay? Which is, uh, we apply the same, uh, the uh, second kitchen of rule because of it still involve the the loops, okay? It is involved the loops. So, E1 is equal to I1, R1 plus R3 because of, R, in this case, R1 and R3 is in series. So, the same current flow, which is I1. And we substitute the E1, uh, I1. Oh, sorry. We substitute, uh, because of R1, we, have cal we want to calculate the current, yeah? Current flow through the R1. So, we substitute the value for R1, which is uh, 1. We have calculated earlier just now, right? Uh, plus with 3 for the R3, 3 ohm. And you will get that the current flow through the R1 now is equal to 2.5 ampere. Actually, the same current flow through the R3, R3 also. Okay, this is the applicate the types of application of the uh, Kirchhoff rules. Okay, first and second Kirchhoff rule. So, this is another one. Uh, so... Your, your uh, microphone, we can't hear you. We have already go live for 30 minutes. So would you like to take a break? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so before we take a break, uh, I will announce the third digit code eh, for credit claim. So listen uh, carefully, everyone. So the digit is number eight. Okay, the digit is number eight. Okay, stay tuned, everyone. Let's watch the advertisement for a break. Berita baik untuk semua. Kini Akademi Youtuber memperkenalkan sistem mata gancaran kredit Ayu untuk dikumpul. Jom ikuti kelas tuition live Ayu untuk mengumpul kredit Ayu dan berpeluang menebus hadiah-hadiah yang menarik. Hadiah bernilai lebih RM10,000 disediakan secara percuma untuk pelajar seluruh Malaysia. Apa tunggu lagi? Tebus ganjaran hebat ini sekarang. Layari www.academyoutuber.com untuk maklumat lanjut. Okay, welcome back students. Uh, Teacher Nun, uh, you may proceed with your presentation. Okay, thank you, Madam Rosmaya. Okay, now we go to the question number four. Question number four is also about the application of a uh, Kirchhoff rule and there are few, uh, previous subtopic. Okay, so uh, if you look at the question, uh, the figure shows two batteries connected to two resistor. Okay, 15 and 30 ohm. So you, we need to determine the magnitude and direction of the current in the circuit. Okay, the, the direction of current is not given and this is only one loop. And we also need to, you also need to calculate the reading of the voltmeter if it is connected across point X and Y. So, you want to calculate the voltmeter reading is represent the potential difference between the point X and point Y. Okay, so the first part is to calculate the magnitude and direction of the current in the circuit. We will apply the second kitchen of rule because our first kitchen of rule supposed to be for the junction. But our circuit is no junction. So, we just go to the second kitchen of rule. And as usual, to identify the direction of loop, we refer to the EMF with the greater value. And here, we have 12 volt of uh, EMF. So, the direction of uh, our loops now is uh, uh, counterclockwise, okay? And then, uh, from the uh, sum of EMF is equal to a product of IR, uh, the EMF now we compare because of there are two EMF in our circuit, 12 and 8. So, if you compare with the direction of the loop, 
So it would the direction of EMF is opposite direction with the loop. That's why for our equation 12 minus 8. Because of 8 volt, the direction is in the opposite direction with the loop. And for the current flow, so we just, we don't know because we want to identify the magnitude and direction of the current. So we just assume, okay, we just assume the direction of current is same direction with the loop. Okay, same direction with the loop. So because of that, I for flow will flow through the 15 ohm resistor and also 30 ohm. So 15 plus 30, we get 45. Then you will get the current flow is equal to a 0 0.09 ampere, the current flow in the circuit. So that's the magnitude of current. And how about the direction? How we want to identify the direction? As I said just now, we assume when we want to apply the second kitchen rule, we assume that the current direction is uh, same direction with the loop. So we and we get the positive value for the current, meaning that the because of the current is positive it direction is same direction with the loop which is counter clockwise at the, or, or we call it anti-clockwise okay and for b we want to calculate the uh, potential difference between point x and point y so for the potential difference we apply the previous uh, subtopic if i'm not mistaken the fourth subtopic v is equal to the terminal voltage v is equal to EMF minus with IR. Actually, the EMF is equal to V plus I, uh, R, internal resistance, uh, IR, internal resistance. But in this case, we just rearrange and we referring. We get, we, we take the first part, the below, uh, the below part of the circuit, which is 12 volt battery. So if we choose that one, okay, uh, V for V, uh, meaning that the reader of meter or potential difference between point X and Y is equal to the EMF is 12. Okay, yeah, because of EMF is same direction with the loop, so positive. And uh, minus with IR, where I is 0 0.09 uh, and R is 3, 30, sorry, 30 ohm. We consider at this circuit, eh, uh, uh, the lower part of the circuit. So you will get that the V is equal to 9.3 volt. Or what happened if you take the upper part of the circuit? So if you look at here, the direction of EMF is in the opposite direction with the loop, right? So if this is alternative, you will get the negative value for the uh, potential different, okay? Or the reading of voltmeter is still 9.3 or around 9.35 volt, okay? Uh, the, the sign on the, the different because of the EMF is in the opposite direction. Okay, this is also the application of the Kitchoff. All right, now we go to the uh, question number five. So now question number five is about the, uh, it is about the same thing. Oh, we want to calculate the rate of energy supply. Okay, figure shows a circuit with the three resistor, R1, R2, and R3, connected to eight volt battery. So we need to calculate the rate of energy supply. So this is the second subtopic in this uh, to this class, yeah. The rate of energy supply. Okay, this is quite a, a very small hidden info. What is the rate of energy supply? When we talk about the energy, we also we we remember we we need to calculate the W or E, right? But this is the rate of energy supply. So for the rate of energy supply, so uh. Uh, it is actually, uh, you need to read the question carefully, the rate of energy supply is actually equal to the power delivered by the EMF. Ah, so the rate of energy supply, please do take note about that. And we know that the equation for power delivered is IV. Power is equal to IV. We want to calculate the power. So it is equal to IV. And if you look at the given information, we do not have the value for I, but we have the value for V. Uh, the voltage is 8 volt. So first we need to calculate the I. So to calculate the I, to calculate the current flow through the circuit, we need to uh, solve the, or we need to find the effective resistance first. So now we need the your previous knowledge about the arrangement of the resistor. So uh, R1 and R2 is in series. So 5 plus 12. And then with the R3, both of them are parallel. So when we calculate the effective resistance for this circuit, you will get 6.3 ohm. Okay. And then 
After that, the purpose is to calculate the I, right? To calculate the I, then we can use the equation for power delivered P. We can calculate the P. So next, to calculate the I, so uh, because of we know the effective resistance, uh, for the I, we can calculate using the uh, Ohm's law. EMF is equal to I R effective. Substitute the value. EMF is 8 and effective resistance is 6.3. And you will get the current which is equal to 1.27 ampere. And then you can calculate the power. Just substitute the current that you get and times with the potential difference. Okay. It's look like very simple, uh, simple circuit, simple question. But there are a few steps that you're supposed to follow to solve or to find the uh, rate of the energy supply by the battery. Okay. Uh, is it clear? I hope that if you have any problem, uh, you can write down in the chat box. So I will help. I will try to help you if you're not sure or uh, maybe you say why we need to do like that, like that, uh, why my solution is like that. Okay, you can uh, write down your question in the chat box. Okay, now we go to the question number six. For question number six, a toaster is rated at 600 watt when connected to 120 volt source. Okay, this is the application. Eh? Uh, a toaster, the, the power for the toaster is 600 watt, uh, connected to 120 volt of source. So we need to calculate the current, what, what current does the toaster carry, meaning that the current that flow in the toaster. Okay, and also what is the toaster resistance? Okay, uh, here are given P and V. Uh, actually, if you refer to the list of selected uh, formula given to you, you can identify that you can calculate the current flow in the toaster by using the equation for the power delivered. So, from the power delivered equation, P is equal to IV, P is 600 watt and V is 120. You will get that the current flow through the uh, toaster is 5 ampere. Okay, very easy, right? Di direct use the power delivered. How about to calculate the resistance of the toaster? So, to calculate the resistance of the toaster, we can use the, because we know that the power dissipated is through the resistor. So, we choose the equation for the power dissipated because of inside that equation for power dissipated, there is a resistor. So, we can calculate the resistance of the toaster for that purpose. We use the equation of P, which is equal to I square R. And then uh, our P, uh, just substitute the P and the current that we have calculated in A. So if you when you calculate, you will get the R, which is equal to 24 ohms. So the resistance of the toaster is 24 ohms. This is only the application for the equation of power delivered and power dissipated or power loss uh, through the conductor. Or toaster is one of our resistance lah, in this circuit. Okay, now we go to the question number seven. Okay, for question number seven, uh, it is about still uh, about the energy, about the power. So an electric heater of resistance 8 ohm draws 15 ampere from the mains. Okay, what is the cost, cost of operating the heater for two hours at the rate of uh, RM 0.33? Ringgit Malaysia 0 0.33 for every 1 kilowatt hour. Okay, every 1 kilowatt hour. So now we want to uh, calculate the cost for this heater. Okay, it is quite, uh, if you refer to the question, how, what is, how to calculate the cost? Okay, take a look at the solution. First step, if you're not sure what you're supposed to do, uh, because of this is calculating the cost, right? Uh, but it is related. If you list the information given, uh, given to you the resistance R, the current I, and also the time, which is two hours. So referring to the information given, you can find the hidden information. Uh, meaning that you explore the question first. You explore the information given from the question. So from the I and R, you can find the voltage. Okay, you can find the potential difference. Or you can uh, find the voltage supply uh, from the electric heater for the electric heater, which is V is equal to IR, you get V is equal to 120 volt. So what next? If you have V, how to calculate the, because of a kilowatt hour is the energy supply. Am I right? The unit for the energy supply. So we can use the electric energy supply equation 
which is equal to W equal to I V T. Okay. And our current I is 15. Our V, okay, V is uh, 120. We just calculate as the hidden information. And the time is 2 hour. We just uh, leave it the unit hour because of the question stated here, hour. So if you calculate, you will get the electric energy supply to the heater is 3.6 kilowatt hour. So what is the cost? to operate because of the energy supply is 3.6 and for each uh, 1 kilowatt hour the cost is 0 0.33 uh, rm so, uh, if you want to calculate uh, the cost for 3.6 kilowatt hour you can use the mathematical relationship okay which is the ratio uh, here you will get the cost for 3.6 kilowatt hour is equal to, referring to here, you just need to times with 0 0.33, right, for the 1 kilowatt hour. And you will get the cost is uh, RM 1.188 ringgit Malaysia. Uh, 1.188 ringgit Malaysia. So actually, uh, the, law, the last one is not uh, quite not related, but it is application of what you know about the electric energy supply to the conductor or to the any electrical equipment. Okay, how to calculate the uh, cost uh, for each equipment that we use in our uh, at our home. Okay, and now we go to the question number eight. So for question number eight, it is about the question eight is about the oh uh, potential divider. Okay, so referring to the figure above, a voltmeter is connected across AB. Okay, voltmeter is connected. Uh, sorry. A voltmeter is connected across A, B. Oh, okay. This is point A and point B. Okay. Determine the reading of the voltmeter. So, you need to imagine uh, from point A to B, there is a voltmeter that we can measure the potential difference across these two points. So, you need to determine the reading of this voltmeter if the switch S is open and what happened if close what is the difference between the reading of the voltmeter so first we focus on when the switch is open so what happened actually the blue the blue the blue uh, the blue arrow re represent the current if the switch s is open the current will not flow through r1 okay so the current only will flow through the r2 and r3 Okay, because of that, we can use the potential divider equation, which is the output, the rate, uh, fraction of the output, input and output voltage. So we have the VAB. In this case, we can calculate the potential difference across point A and B, or we can calculate, uh, we can measure using the voltmeter. VAB divided by E equal to, for VAB, there is only R2 here, so R2 over R total. So, R total is involved uh, R2 which is 30 ohm and R3 which is 40 ohm. Because of that, if you calculate, you will get that the reading for the voltmeter when the switch S is open, it is equal to 5.14 volt. Okay. So, I hope that uh, you uh, remember the, uh, the application of the potential divider, the equation that relate to the application of the potential divider. And now, what happens when the Swiss S is closed? So, when the Swiss S is closed, okay. So, first, uh, sorry, yeah, because of my circuit, uh, you, 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 you need to imagine the circuit now, Swiss is closed. So, what happened to the current? Of course, the current when uh, arrive at point A, it will divide into two. Mean that the, meaning that the current will flow through the R1 also and R2. So, all is effective. That's why we need to calculate the effective resistance first. So, effective resistance, which is uh, because of R1 and R2 is in parallel in this case because of the current divided by 2, right? When the Swiss S is closed. So, we calculate the R1, 2. We get 12 ohm. And uh, we uh, because of we want to calculate the potential difference across point A and B, which is represent the combination of R1 and R2 in parallel, so, we can write down that the VAB, we want to calculate the VAB over E, EMF, is equal to R12. VAB, because of the effective resistance, is these two resistors, R1 and R2. Okay, divide by, uh, effect total resistance is R12 plus with R3. So, R12, we have calculated here, it is 12 plus with 
40 represent IRR3. And if you calculate, you will get that the VAB is equal to 2.77 volt. Okay? This is, a, the equation is simple. But to apply, you need to understand the circuit uh, one by one. Okay. So this is question number eight. Okay, take a look at question number nine. Okay, for question number nine, uh, this is about the potentiometer, the last subtopic yeah, for today's class. So for question number nine, a figure shows a potentiometer with a sliding wire OS of length 100 centimeter and resistance 2 ohm. Okay, OS is a wire, one meter wire. Okay, because of 100, 100 centimeter. And the EMF of cell B, cell B, okay, ni, B is given as 2 volt. It stated that when IG is equal to zero, meaning that at the balance point, when IG, there's no current flow through the IG, IG is equal to zero, the length of from O to O to Y is 40 centimeter. And from uh, O to X is 56, uh, 56 centimeter. So we need to determine the potential difference across OX, okay, which is represented by VOX. Now we want to calculate the uh, VOX. So, I just list all the info, information given here. Okay. So, referring to the information given, uh, the voltage across OY. Okay. The voltage across OY. Okay. Please refer to the circuit. Nah. Uh, okay. The voltage uh, across OY is also equal to, which is LY just now. LOY is 40 centimeter, right? So, it is equal to the EMF for the cell B in, for the first part. So, we said that VOY is equal to 2 volt. Now, we want to calculate the VOX. We know the VOY, this is the hidden information that you're supposed to understand from the equation given. So, to calculate, we just refer to the equation, the relationship for the potential uh, potentiometer, which is V is directly proportional to the L because we have the length of the wire. So, we can write down that uh, because we want to calculate the V not X. Okay, so V not X over V not Y is equal to L O X over L O Y. And we just substitute V O Y is equal to uh, EMF of cell B, which is 2 volt. And then L O X initially is 56, L O Y is 40. And if you calculate, you will get that the value for V O X is equal or the potential difference across uh, V O X is equal to 2.8 volt. Okay. So, uh, this is the first, the very basic application of the potentiometer where you're supposed to know the relationship between the potential different EMF and also the length of the potentiometer. Okay, now we go to the question number uh, 10. Okay, for question number 10. So, the figure shows a potentiometer circuit up made up of a uniform wire AB. Okay, the length is 1 meter. And resistance for AB, RAB is 5 ohm. Okay, just take a look at the given information. The internal resistance of both cells are negligible. Okay, what is the length of AC when the galvanometer reading is 0? Okay, first we need to find the LAC. Okay, to calculate the LAC, we need to take note that when IG is equal to zero, what happened when IG is equal to zero? Galvanometer is zero. Actually, uh, at that time, uh, C is a balance point. And then when the galvanometer is balanced, we can say that VX, okay, VX is directly proportional to the VAB. Okay, VX is directly proportional to the VAB. Okay, when the IG is equal to zero. Okay, now uh, to calculate the LAC, now we know Vx is equal to Vab. So Vab ni actually equal to 4 volt, right? Because of it is directly proportional. Because of that, when we use the potentiometer uh, relationship, we have the Vy equal to Vx because of Vy ni Ig is equal to 0, right? So uh, it is equal to LAC represented by Vy and Vx which is LAB. Vx which is VAB just now, right? Uh, that's why we can use this relationship. VX directly proportional to the LAB. VY directly proportional to the LAC. So because of that, we have the value for VY, which is 3 volt. VX is 4, which is equal to uh, VAB. Okay? And then LAC, we want to calculate. LAB is 100 centimeter. So because of that, if you calculate, you will get that the LAC is 75 centimeter. 
Okay, that's the length of AC when the galvanometer show a zero reading or IG is equal to zero. Okay, now for B, okay, for B, uh, if a one ohm resistor is connected in series with cell X, what is the new balance length uh, of AC? So now this is VX. So uh, we need to put one ohm resistor. So I put there, can you see R is equal to one ohm? Uh, series with the Vx. So to calculate the balance length, what we need to do, okay, now because of there is uh, another resistance inside the circuit, we know that the resistance for the wire AB is 5 ohm, okay, given in the equation. Uh, given in the equation. So now we can calculate for the first circuit, okay, for the first circuit that involves Vx, so uh, R, the R uh, external resistor added, is in series with the resistance of the AB. So we can calculate the total resistance for the first circuit. Okay, which is equal to 6 ohm. Alright. Now, uh, we need we can calculate the current flow through the AB. When we know the total resistance inside this circuit, we can calculate the current through the AB. So the current for the uh, uh, flow through the wire AB is equal to 0 0.67 ampere because of we can use Vx is equal to IAB times with RT because of the same current flow through the R and the RAB, right? So uh, it is IAB, same current lah, IAB, the current flow through the wire AB and R is equal. So we can represent IAB. So you can calculate IAB which is equal to 0 0.67 ampere. Now, you can calculate new VAB because we want to find the length AC. So we can get the new value for VAB, potential difference because of why? Why the VAB is changed compared to the initial part just now? Because of additional resistor here. Additional resistance inside this circuit. So when we calculate the new uh, potential difference across uh, wire AB, it is equal to 3.35 volt. It is not 4 volt anymore because of additional as uh, resistance in series with the wire AB. So the potential difference now is uh, decreased 3.35 volt. So we can calculate the, the new length, the new balance length of AC because of uh, VAB now is 3.35 and we can compare with the VY because of when the IG is equal to zero, the potential across AC is equal to VY. So you can get the LAC is equal to LAB. Okay, divide by LAB and then you substitute the value, you will get the new uh, length, new balance length AC is equal to uh, 89.6. Uh, centimeter okay so this is uh, actually we just use the equation uh, the standard the ohms law but the ohms equation right but you need to uh, particularly refer to the correct the subscript is important like, in this case i'm sure i just want to remind you please follow the correct subscript so you will not lose when you uh, try to find what you're supposed to find okay and then i i, I just want to uh, take a few more minutes uh, to answer question number 11. So because of question number 11 is about, uh, one of it is to uh, calculate the internal resistance of the cell E2. So in the circuit shown, uh, the shown the EMF of the cell E1 is 2 volt. Okay, I, I also list here. And LPQ, the length of the wire PQ is 100 centimeter. So when Swiss S is open, the balance length is 75 centimeter. When the Swiss S is closed, the balance length is 65 centimeter. So we need to calculate the EMF of uh, E2. Okay, this is the uh, function of the potential meter, right? to measure the unknown EMF and also to measure the internal resistance. So, uh, to measure the EMF of the E2 unknown EMF, so uh, in this case, take a look part by part because of we have two cases, when Swiss S is open and when what happens when it is closed. So, when Swiss S is open, V, uh, the potential difference across PJ from point P to J, VPJ is equal to E2. Okay, that's the relationship. And then we know that it is also because of for the potential meter, V is directly proportional to the R and also directly proportional to the L. Because of that, we can calculate the EMF of the cell E2 referring to this relationship. Okay, because of uh, we, uh, in this case, when Swiss S is open, there's no current flow at this part. So E2 is equal to VPJ. So uh, we can calculate the E2, which is equal to uh, divided by E1 equal to LPJ over L. PQ, just substitute the value, okay, and then you will get the EMF 
the second EMF itu is equal to 1.5 volt. Okay. Basic uh, application of uh, potentiometer equation but you need to particular with the uh, point point uh, that you refer. Okay. And then to calculate the internal resistance of the cell E2. Okay. To calculate the internal resistance now, the Swiss S is closed. Okay. So uh, for B, when Swiss S is uh, initially, when Swiss S is open, VPJ, we said just now, it is equal to E2, right? With the length of 75 centimeter when it is open. But when it is closed, what is the value for VPJ now? Do the V, the potential different across P, point P and J is uh, changed? Yes, of course, because of when S close, LPJ is 65 centimeter, right? So actually we can calculate, okay, take a look at the circuit now. Uh, when the Swiss S is closed, there is a current flow in this circuit. So uh, at the balance point, J is a balance point, so IG is still equal to zero. So no current flow through the galvanometer. So because of that, when we want, uh, if you want to calculate, the, we can calculate the VPJ first when the Swiss S is closed, which is 65 centimeter. So you will get VPJ, which is equal to 1.3 volt. Okay, please, I, I, I am particularly putting the subscript there. So I hope that you can focus on the subscript that I refer. Then you know what you're supposed to substitute and why you're supposed to substitute. Okay, so we just get the VPJ. We want to calculate the internal resistance of E2. So now the new VPJ, uh, potentially for across PJ, when the Swiss S is closed, is 1.3. Uh, initially, uh, in A, we have calculated E2. So I just add, add the given information here. E2 is 1.5 volt. Okay, now we have another info, which is VPJ is equal to 1.3 volt. So from this value, to calculate the internal resistance, we need to calculate the I2 first. I2 is the current flow through this circuit. If you refer to my diagram, yeah, I2. So to calculate the I2, we can use the VPJ because of the potential difference across PJ is also uh, equal to potential difference uh, in this circuit between the uh, E2. So uh, it is uh, VPJ just now is 1.3. I2 we want to calculate and R, the resistance is, is 4 ohm. So you can calculate, you will get I2, which is equal to 0 0.325 ampere. And from the I2 now, we will apply the concept, uh, actually, second kitchen of rule, okay? E2, uh, for this circuit only, E2, EMF2 is equal to I2, R, external resistor and internal resistor connected in series because of the same current flow. So R plus uh, internal resistance. So our R is 4. Because of that, we can calculate the internal resistance, which is equal to 0 0.62 ohm. So actually, this uh, question is a hot question that you're supposed to be particular with the concept that relate to the first circuit, uh, first, uh, first part of the circuit and the second part of the circuit. Okay, so I think that's it uh, for today's class. Uh, thank you everyone and I wish you all the best. Good luck and stay safe. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and also I'm Eda Rosmaya. And please uh, uh, like and share this video. And if you have any comment, uh, you can uh, write down so that I can improve my next presentation. Okay, now I give back to Eda Rosmaya. Thank you Eda Rosmaya. Okay, with God's grace, uh, we have reached the end of today's session. Congratulations to those who are able to follow our session from the beginning until the end. So before we end our session for today, uh, I will announce the fourth and the fifth or last two digits code okay, for credit claim. So the digits are five, four. Okay, five, four. Okay, so all of you, please stop posting your comments for a while. And if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, uh, please do so. Make sure it turns to grey colour, eh? not the red colour. And activate the icon bell so that you will not miss the next class session. Then if you find that the lesson uh, was beneficial, click like and share to your friends on your social media. So spread and share the goodness. So once completed, type done on the chat box. So before the certificate link and credit claim are given, okay, as a token uh, of thank you eh, for your dedication in joining the free online class today. So I will paste the ECGL uh, link also, okay, in the chat box. Okay.
Okay, so the certificate link and credit claim are already given in the chat box. So please take note, the link will end half an hour after this live. Uh, make sure to use the EDD email or more email only to log in. So incorrect email use will not be entertained. So if you haven't got one, please apply. Eh? The link to apply the EDD email is also already given in the chat box. Eh? At the earlier part of the chat box, you can find it there. So if you wish to get more information on the online classes, go to www.academyyoutuber.com. And to those who haven't joined EDD Junior Telegram, please do so. So once again, I would like to thank all of students for joining today. And remember that the more classes you join, the more credit you can claim. So feel free to share this free tuition class to your friends and teachers all over Malaysia. So this is a collective effort from all the teachers throughout Malaysia for all the students throughout the country. So thank you too for being a YouTuber Academy supporter too. So I think that's all for now. See you in another session. Ingat hashtag bermula percuma, selamanya percuma. Assalamualaikum. Stay safe till we meet again next week on the same day, uh, same time. Okay, Sunday at 5pm. Okay, bye-bye. Wow, banyaknya hadiah menarik menanti anda. Wah, kini Akademi Youtuber mengambil inisiatif baru di mana memberikan hadiah-hadiah ini secara percuma. Ya, percuma kepada anda semua. Hmm, bagaimana caranya dengan mengikuti kelas tuition online percuma Akademi Youtuber sambil mengutip mata kredit? Anda dapat menukarkannya dengan hadiah-hadiah yang menarik ini. Tunggu apa lagi? Segalanya percuma. Dan lepaskan peluang tau. Dah dapat banyak hadiah menarik, takkan nak lepaskan peluang. Layari www.academyyoutuber.com sekarang untuk maklumat lanjut. Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber.